This Technique Tuesday video is the third in a series on stranded color work. This week I'll demonstrate how to trap long floats at the back of the work. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. So in the past few weeks, we have been looking at various aspects of stranded color work. First, we talked about how to just handle working two yarns at the same time, how to alternate between them and, and learning to, to deal with maintaining good tension. Then last week, we talked about different ways of handling your floats, whether we had parallel, we, with parallel floats, we have color dominance, so we had to decide whether we wanted the uh, pattern color to be dominant or the background to be dominant, it creates two different results, or if we wanted rotating floats. So for this particular design, the floats were never longer than five stitches. There was never any point in this pattern where I had to carry either color for more than five stitches. And at this gauge, which is about five stitches an inch, um, a five stitch float is just fine. When it, you get over about an inch, then you want to consider where you, whether you want to trap floats or not because that can really help maintain better tension if you trap longer floats. Plus, if you're working things where hands are gonna get stuck up inside uh, and you don't want your fingers to get caught in the floats, you might wanna consider trapping floats. So here's an example. This motif up here has on the bottom couple of rows, it has longer than five uh, stitches in a row of this background color. And then the top two rows are the same. So I've got seven stitches in a row, and then nine stitches in a row that are all of this light blue color. And so what I've done is I've trapped this very long float at the back of the work using a method. Um, in this particular case, I used a method called weaving. So it just kind of divides that long float in half so it's no longer than just a normal float would be. When you have consecutive rows where you need to trap floats, you wanna make sure that you're not trapping in the same place every time you wanna kind of stagger them. So you, want to, you may wanna plan out ahead of time where you're going to trap your floats so that you don't have them stacked on top of each other. And they're also positioned somewhere in the span of stitches that's going to divide them up and, um, in a reasonably equal way, or at least in a way where you're not going to have more than an inch's worth of stitches um, with a, a float behind it. There are two basic ways of trapping floats. One is called weaving, one is called twisting. The method that is best for you is going to depend on a combination of how you're dealing with your floats, if you're working them in parallel or rotating, and also uh, how you're managing the two yarns, if you're holding um, both in one hand or one in each hand. Floats are trapped when you are working consecutive stitches in one of the two colors for quite a span of stitches. Typically, anything more than an inch wide would be a, a span that would be long enough that you'd want to trap floats. So if you're working with worsted weight yarn and you're at five stitches an inch, if you need to work in this example, let's say I've got three white stitches, let's say I need to work six or seven or more white stitches in a row, then I would want to trap the pink yarn at the back of the, of the work at some point in that span. So the, if I was using rotating floats, the easiest way would be to, to drop the white and then reach underneath the pink and then continue on that way. And that will twist these two colors together and it's going to trap the pink against the back of the work. So I've worked, I've worked about four. Let me do a fifth one. So what I would do is I would just reach under the pink and grab the white again. It's going to twist those two colors together and then I would continue on with the white. So if you're working in one color for a while, say the white color, uh, and I'm, I've been working in the white color, and I want to twist it, I would make sure to reach underneath the pink uh, in order to grab the white, and then that will just trap it um, at the back. 
So if you are working with one yarn in each hand and the yarn that is the span of stitches is in your left hand, so this is the dominant yarn and you want to trap the non-dominant or the yarn that's in your right hand, you insert as if you're going to knit a stitch, you wrap the yarn uh, using the yarn that you want to trap, you use that to wrap just like you would for a regular knit stitch. Then you pick the yarn that you actually want to work and then you unwrap that pink and then you complete the stitch. So this is going to peek through a little bit. These are very high contrast yarns. It is going to peek through a little bit. Um, that's the nature of weaving. So I'll show you again, insert, I, I'm going to knit another white stitch, but I, so I insert, I wrap the pink, pick the white, unwrap the pink, and then complete the stitch. So then what you see is that the pink yarn is just going right through. It's just trapped beneath both of these two little um, strands of yarn right here. And it's just going straight through and it's being trapped on the back. If you are working with one yarn in each hand and it's the working yarn is in your right hand and you need to trap the yarn in your left hand, it's similar but slightly different than it is when we are trapping the right hand yarn. So again, you're going to enter as if to knit. You're going to bring the trapping yarn over the needle in the reverse direction that you would normally bring it to knit. Like if you were going to knit this, you would bring it around this way. We're going to bring it around over the top of the needle like this. Then we wrap the stitch, the working yarn, and we let the trapping yarn come back over the top. So it's just laying over the working yarn and then we complete the stitch. So I'll do another one. I'm going to work a couple stitches. I enter as if to knit. I bring the trapping yarn over the back of the needle, wrap the knit stitch, bring the trapping yarn back over so it's laying across the working yarn and then I pull it through to complete the stitch. And once again you can see that we have these two little uh, legs that are trapping the pink yarn at the back. So here we're working both yarns in the left hand in parallel over the index finger. So this is the upper yarn and this is the lower yarn. The dominant one is the pink one. So I'm working the white yarn right now and I need to trap the pink yarn. I'm going to insert my needle. I'm going to come underneath that pink yarn in order to grab the white yarn. And then I'll return to working. I, I might need to use a thumb or something to return to grabbing it from the top and then continue on. So if I'm working with both yarns over one finger and I'm working parallel floats and I've been working white and I need to trap the pink, I come behind both colors. This might take a little bit of fingers again too. And you're going to bring your needle between the two colors. So it's going to catch that white like that. And then you can pull the white through. And you can see how that pink is laying over the top. So if I need to trap that pink while I'm working the white on the bottom, I come in, I come around, bring my needle over the top and around. And then I come between those two strands in order to trap the white yarn. You might need to use a finger to kind of help things along. And then I pull that through. Now this might seem like it looks wrong. If you pull on that, it'll see, so we'll see the little blips. From behind. If you work with both yarns in your left hand but they're each over a separate finger, let's say you're working the white which is on the bottom and you want to trap that pink which is over the middle finger, you insert 
and you come around both of the stitches and then bring your needle tip between the two which catches the white you see that and pull it through you can see how that pink is lying on top of it but now when you continue on with the white then the pink has been trapped on the back if you're working a long span of stitches in the same color you've got both yarns in your left hand one over each finger and again you this time you want to trap the yarn that's on the index finger this is pretty simple you just reach through come underneath and grab that yarn and pull it through and then again you'll see how these are crossed over and when you grab the white yarn the next time from above you will have finished the weaving process now this scenario is not one that i am going to be very expert at but in this scenario i've got both yarns in my right hand i've got the white yarn the, the yarn we're working in the long span is over my index finger and the pink yarn is on my middle finger so if i'm working along here and I want to trap the pink yarn I'm going to bring the pink yarn over in the reverse way that I would normally knit a stitch so it's coming over from behind then I'm going to take both yarns and wrap both of them around here and now you'll see how that pink yarn is laying on top of the white yarn and I can finish that stitch and now when I work the white yarn again if I can there we go then I complete the the trap of using weaving now if we're working in the opposite way so that the white yarn the, the yarn that's in the long span is over the middle finger and the yarn we want to trap is over the index finger. This is where I run into a little bit of trouble. <laughs> um, this is not my normal way of working stranded color work and it's just trickier for me. So the idea is that you're going to enter, you're going to wrap the pink yarn in the normal way then you're going to wrap the other yarn in the normal way and then unwrap the pink yarn and then complete the stitch. So you enter as if to knit, you're going to wrap the pink yarn around, then you're going to wrap the white yarn around and then you have to unwrap that pink yarn and that's where in order to pull the white one through. So then when you work the next white one, you finish the trapping. Again, this is not something I'm adept at, but that's just conceptually what you would do in order to trap the yarns. Parallel floats do not twist around each other when you switch from knitting in one color to the other. So weaving is often the natural choice for trapping floats. It does take a bit of practice to get the hang of weaving and little blips of color can show through to the front. For high contrast yarns, this may be undesirable. Rotating floats causes the yarns to twist around each other. So twisting yarns is often the natural choice for trapping floats. Twisting is also the easiest float trapping method to get the hang of. Regardless of whether you work rotating or parallel floats, twisting is an option, but it tends to be inconvenient if you manage one yarn in each hand. I would recommend working on a swatch to practice trapping floats. You'll be able to determine how you want to trap floats so that they don't stack on top of each other from row to row, and also to see whether you prefer the results of weaving or twisting yarns. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in two weeks.